Hi guys and welcome back to Wednesday News Show. Today we have a different setup. We have a different setup, uh, which I like. I you think like? it's a bit old school. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing with our arms? We're just we're crossing them, cradling. Good holidays. Yeah, it was good. Thanks. Very good. Very hot beach. I'm gonna do this. I can <laughs> this in the mic. Uh, I just want to say a big shout out to all the podcasts out there. Hello. If you are a podcast and you're listening, give us a nice five star review. Well, uh, if, well, if you don't like it, then don't bother. Give us a no, bad review. Still, no, still. No, no, do no. Still, give, give a review. Okay. No matter what it is. Should we get on with the news? Uh, yeah, well, first thing for the podcasts, um, you have a beard. So imagine you go with a nice, thick summer beard. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I'll just give you this little little beard mic, mic moment. That's sound. Nice. But yeah, news. First up. Chamonix. Last week, Teresa and Matt talked about the semi-finals, and now we're going to bring you the podium finishers from the Chamonix Championship. 16-year-old Alexandra Topkova battled her way onto the podium for a bronze medal in her breakout year. Natalie Grossman's flowing style and route reading skills meant she almost topped out, but the night belonged to Laura Rigoda, who climbed quickly and with confidence to take the top spot. In the men's comp, Martin Stranich was delighted to be back in the finals and took bronze. Stefano Gasolfi, who won in Chamonix in 2018, got the silver after almost completing the crux, while Sean Steezy Bailey worked out the crux beater, getting his second lead gold medal of the season. So Sean Steezy Bailey dominated in Chamonix. Yep. Still yep. have no idea why he's called Steezy. What is Steez? How does one become Steezy? Because he won twice in a row in style. So he's a stylish climber. It means stylish, apparently. Was he stylish yes. in Brion Sun? He has to wear a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> but right. about Brion Sun, yeah, let's see what happened. Brian Son hosted the fourth round of the IFSC Lead World Cup, and it was an action-packed final. For the men, Martin Stranich picked up his second bronze gold medal in a week with a crowd-pleasing performance. Dmitry Fakiryanov picked up his first World Cup medal since 2017 with a silver. He showed off all his endurance and he fell high up on the wall and held the top spot for a while. Stefano Ghisolfi came out second to last, and as one of the favorites for the win, he delivered. He made an impossible save on the yellow volumes after a slip, and continued to climb higher than anybody else. A fantastic gold for Stefano. In the women's comp, Vita Luca was gunning for a medal all season long, and took the bronze medal in Briançon. Natalia Grossman won another medal to add to her collection. She seemed to enjoy every moment and almost stopped out before exploding off a crimp, taking silver. Eliska Adamowska was climbing in her first senior lead finals, and what a performance from her. She cut loose on the crimps and reached a new high point that no one could beat. A stunning and emotional gold medal for her. So a couple of talking points from the Briançon finals. Sure. S Stefano, Spider-Man hands because he just like I don't know compressed and stayed on a volume when he should have slipped and fell and probably not got gold instead he just spider man his way yes because that's awesome so he's obviously cheating he's got <laughs> super he? spidey st spidey strength oh, he's I feel got it's like a... web suckers in his hands which isn't fair is it I yeah mean... if you're spider-man and you're climbing in the world championships you kind of got an unfair advantage isn't it just like athletic advantage or like body advantage because you know like I'm kidding some... he's not really cheating he's definitely really <laughs> fine he's probably just been training really hard yeah on like play. his power box on his, like... power, <laughs> on his power box exactly and then uh, yeah Eliska won her first gold medal and it was uh, it was really emotional I'd go back and watch that because uh, she did an amazing route and then just got down and I don't know started crying yeah did but you, like happy, you happy tears I was crying as well you, you were crying watching yeah it. I always get emotional with these things how uh was Matt crying in the in the commentary box I actually did ask him and yeah he said he, sh he shed some tears yeah I don't believe you or like Matt doesn't cry <laughs> I've been I've known him for five years now and I've never seen him I don't cry. know if he cried he definitely got like he, emotional as well really okay fine I mean I'll give, I, that, I'll give that to him yes he, he coughed he coughed a couple of times. No, because he can't cough anymore. What, because of COVID? <laughs> right. Anyway, that's great. I'm very pleased. Uh, she's a young girl though as well. Aliska Adamowska. 18, I think. 18. 
so much potential. Let's, I'm, I'm excited to see what she can get up to. Yeah, I mean, she's from the Czech Republic, so you know. Excellent lineage. And she's called Adam. Ovska. Adamovska. Uh, right, next up, we are going over to Peru, where the Iku, the, the Pau brothers, the Pu brothers, or however, wherever you want to call them, have been putting up new lines in Peru. Brothers Enenko and Iko Pau just got to Peru and have started off their expedition in style, establishing a new route. Viva Peru Carajo, a mixed climb up the south face of Nevado, Humshiraju, east in Peru. The 600 meter route is situated at an altitude of 5,000 meters and reaches difficulties up to M7, 80 degrees, and follows thin slithers of ice that, sneaking between the rock, cross the entire wall like a spider's web. The route was established all free and alpine style in a 15 hour push from base camp to the summit and back. So the Pooh brothers, uh, is it Pooh or is it Pow? Please let us know oh, in the pow. comments below. Pow. Well, it's Pooh Pow. Pooh Pow. It could be both. Yeah. Anyway, they are old school but new school climbers. They have been doing it for the last 10, 15 years. Every time they come up, I like to give them a little bit of an extra shout out because they're legendary and they put up new routes and they do all types of different climbing and they've got great names. So big up, guys. Eker. I feel they have strong names. It's not the, that's, it's the other part that I was going for. I like <laughs> oh. the fact they're called Pooh. Right. On other news, uh, let's talk about some outdoor bouldering. Irina Kuzmenko has done her third 8B this year, the Arch in Rocklands. She's now working Monkey Wedding, which could possibly be her first 8B plus boulder. Vadim Timonov is riding the 8C wave down in Rocklands, climbing Spray of Light, his third 8C in less than two weeks. He also flashed the guest list on 8B Boulder. As reported on 8A.NU, US climber Nick Bradley climbed Delirium, an 8C in Mount Evans. He actually climbed his first 8B in 2015, and since then, he's been very consistent and patient with the grades, building up his experience and strength to climb already two 8Cs this year. So, Irina and Tim, a power couple down in Rocklands. Just All right, they're a couple. I think so. I mean, I Did no I idea. stalk well enough their Instagram? Oh, they're in, they're in Rocklands together, they're climbing together. They're both Russian. Yes. Be safe to assume that they are a climbing cop. friends. Friends. <laughs> Fair Mates. Uh, spotters, because you need spotters uh, in bouldering. Climbing buddies. Climbing buddies. Anyway, uh, moving on to sport climbing, where we've got the 9A roundup. 17 year old Tongi Merhaar climbed his first 9A plus, La Moustache Qui Fache. You can see how tough this route is from a video of Adam Andre and Seb Bouin trying it. French climber Mathieu Buillard, who is 31, has climbed Dursex et le Grand Mutishki, his sixth 9A this year. Pierre Le Cerf has made the first ascent of Alone and proposed a grade of 9A. The route is about 85 movements long and took Pierre four sessions to complete. Luca Bana climbed Moon Landing, a 9A at Passo della Presolana, and about the route, he says, probably the best line I've ever bolted and climbed. About 9As. About 9As. We're talking about a 9A plus because it was uh, um, Chris Sharma's birthday, I guess, on uh, Biography. Well, as we normally talk about the route and not the man, it was actually uh, Biography forward slash realization, which nobody ever calls its 20th birthday. 20th birthday. Which was the first 9A plus, right? Yes. What year was it climbed again? Well, if it's 20 years. To you do the math. 2001. Very good. And how old is Chris Sharma? <laughs> He's 40 years old. Who would have thought it, eh? He's a year mm. older than me. Born in 1981. Great. It was Hugo's birthday last week. It was indeed, 39. Uh, anyway, me and Chris, uh, we're good friends. Seeing as we're so similar in age, I'm mostly friends with people that are around my age. Mm. And so, yeah, you have kids and stuff. You went to holiday in Holiday in Spain with him, right? With him, yeah. Hey, Chris. That was fun, the last two weeks. Deep water solo? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Really good. Uh, above my pool. Um, anyway, what's up next? 9B counter. 9B counter. Let's go. There are no 9Bs. There are no 9Bs. Or 8C pluses. There are no 9Bs or 8C pluses. Why would no. 8C pluses matter? Because we have an 8C plus counter. And what's the guy that does all the counting? David, but David. Um, he must be on summer holidays. Say hi to David, everybody. Well, he must be on summer holidays because nobody's climbing 90s and 80 pluses. Or heard from him in a while. Oh, David. David. Mm -hmm. 
shop stuff and the uh, summer sale is still going on right indeed uh but what, up to what percentage can you get off up to 60 percent off very good not on gear but like on clothing you can find up to 60 percent it's climbing is... shoes i think you can get off up to 60 percent off as well yes okay let's just say climbing yes. shoes as well yes go get yourself a bargain what do you want to get well patagonia is up to 40 percent, and i'm a big fan of the black hole cube uh which is a bag <laughs> from patagonia flo's gonna flash it up right now uh, this is a great little bag for carrying bits of other Patagonia gear. You right there? Yeah, it's a bit far. A bit far away. Uh, but anyway, up to 40% off Patagonia gear, which everybody likes Patagonia. Even people who don't climb like Patagonia. Yeah, it's like urban, outdoorsy, general person All style. the stuff that we love. We love that yes. stuff. Urban, outdoor. Hmm. Mm. Two words that don't go together, but somebody's fused them together in a marketing meeting somewhere anyway what's next uh, media next media is yes. and uh, what <laughs> sorry there's a fly around podcast is a fly okay it's carry, still carry around on. uh we have a uh, fly spray we do we do let's not give it too much attention it's like you know bad things let if you get too, too much attention they breed new life Yes. Uh, for medias this week, we have an Arterix Academy video because we went along on a women's mountaineering clinic. So Host, Hosted by? Women. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's go leech out of here. Hey, <laughs> Zaria, we got to go. Yes, oh, we have to go up the red actually. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this is hard work. We're at the bottom of Arete de Laurence, and then from here we have the ridge, and then down to the Cosmic Sot. Whoa. What's the climbing like, Tay? Um, it's pretty chill. Is it slabby? It's a technical slabby, uh, snowy terrain. Amongst those women hosts that hosted it, there was a certain woman who was... Hugo, with a wig. No, Ines Poppert was there as an athlete. <laughs> I'm kind of more referring to you, but like we can just, we don't have to mention it. Oh, you right. Uh, I was there. It. I learned a couple of things. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, go check out the video, it's good. Uh, next up, we're gonna do a little uh, teaser of this week's Epic TV video, which is Beatrice Colli, uh, third episode in her series, here's a little clip. tra i miei piani, nel senso non è che ho, desideravo scontrarmi con la prima artista del mondo, però dovevo partecipare alla gara, quindi... It's a good one to watch because she actually breaks a world record. I'm not going to tell you which world record she breaks because there's quite a few in the world right now. But uh, needs to say she did it pretty quickly, if you know what I mean. Because she was speedy. I mean, I wasn't going to give that much away, but yes, she was speed climbing. She broke the speed climbing world record. Thanks, T. You just no. Well, don't, you don't don't go and watch it now. There's no point. It's fine. Her age no, no, world fine. record just, isn't. Just ruin all my just... all my Q's and T's and whatever. Comment of the week time, and we gotta sing. We gotta sing, or you gotta sing? We gotta I've sing. I've never heard you sing by yourself. You've always heard me sing by myself. I think this week, boom, it's up to you. Go for it, Teresa Terry T. The floor is yours. Comment of the week! Very nice, very Taylor Swift, I like it. I'm gonna right, close my eyes. Um, <laughs> I've got a comment from L. Friedrich. 
Yes. Of Friedrich? Yes. Thanks for the timestamps. That's a great comment. <laughs> really good. You're welcome. Nice. What's happened to comment of the week since I've been away? It's... I know they are uh, nice. People in the comments are nice, which I don't mind. But like, well, no, don't be nice. If you want a comment of the week, you got to be nasty or or some kind of like I don't know, combative comment that creates some kind of uproar. Uproar or more comments. Speaking of which, my comment uh, got a reply from Epic TV. Oh. This is indign indignating. This is Alejo Suta, by the way. This is indignating. You didn't publish the last Friday Gear Show. I was so excited. Uh, Epic TV Decline Daily replies, We've got an exciting one this week. Yippee! I'm so excited. <laughs> Can't wait. You guys are the best. See you soon. Alejo, I hope you enjoy this Friday Gear Show. It's going to be a special one. Mac Room's on the scene. He's filming with Stefano Gasolfi. No, it's giving too much away now. It's, it's going to be good. Watch it. Featuring Stefano Gasolfi. I do feel he was talking about last week's gear show. But that didn't happen. Yeah, it happened. The, gear, the bag one. Well, then what? So he was talking on? about the week before. Ah, but, I echo. Um, ah, we saw the bag one this yes. last week. Check out that. That was a good Check one. Check out that. Links down below. Yeah. <sighs> Which bag do you like best out of last week's show? Do I really need... Well, I'm trying to get the low alpine one. You like the low alpine one? Okay, yes. fine. That's fine. Do we need to send them back? No. I think Matt Dibbs did though. He's already sent them back. No, no, no. As in, like, he wants it. Okay. So, I think. Well. Bags, Matt's got enough bags anyway. He can. <laughs> anyway. Uh, right. Next up. That's it. That's it. What are you doing this weekend? What am I doing this weekend? Uh, oh, I'm getting vaccinated, so I'm not climbing. You're not vaccinated yet. Well, the second shot. I thought you said you were vaccinated. That's why we're sitting so close together. <laughs> you know, it's fine. I wore my mask. Last time I did that. 